Okay, welcome back. So in this set of lectures, I wanna just get us started on reading Aristotle. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about Aristotle's biography and then um, walk through pretty much the first um, section and a half of Aristotle's text. And then there will be some questions in the reading response about the rest of the reading from Aristotle this week. So I won't actually cover all of the reading this week in the slides, but I will kind of get you started on reading, and then I will ask some questions about the reading, the rest of the reading, uh, in the uh, reading response. Okay, Aristotle was born in ancient Greece, and he lived about uh, 300 to 400 years before the birth of Jesus. Um, he studied with Plato, another famous philosopher, and uh, Plato himself studied with Socrates. So um, we, won't, we won't read those philosophers here, but in case you know a little bit about that history, the lineage goes Socrates, and then Socrates' student was Plato, and then Aristotle's, um, sorry, uh, Plato's student was Aristotle. So he's in this uh, very famous lineage of philosophers. And Aristotle had a school where he taught classes, uh, and he also conducted a lot of research. So he actually had people collect specimens, biological specimens for him from around the Mediterranean world where he lived. Greece is, of course, on the Mediterranean Sea. I'll show you a map of uh, ancient Greece in just a moment. And uh, Aristotle had people collect biological specimens and bring them to him as part of his biological researches. And he wrote many books on biology. He also wrote on physics. He had a, a theory of physics um, and a theory of the motions of the uh, what we now know are the planets. Um, and he had a he had theories of lots of things of psychology uh, and of politics. Um, he he had people collect constitutions for him from different um, uh, governments at the time around, again, around the Mediterranean world. So he compared and contrasted these different uh, styles of government and the sets of rules that different governments went by when he uh, wrote his political when he, when he wrote his analysis of political theory. So he had a very uh, surprisingly kind of modern way of approaching research that involved actually gathering data and processing that data in some way in his own writing. His processing is much more analytic than it is quantitative. He's not um, you know, crunching numbers or anything like that, but he is uh, comparing and contrasting, talking about the different ways that things can be and classifying things. And uh, for this reason, he's often thought to be um, one of the most uh, important scientific minds or scientific um, contributors to the project of science in the history of the world as we know it, because he compiled all this information and he, um, and he did all these analyses and he subsequently had uh, a very large influence on um, on world civilization, uh, initially through the Western tradition, but also, um, and including there, uh, the, um, the Islamic tradition, because as you may know, a lot of ancient Greek philosophy and science and mathematics was preserved in the library at Alexandria in Egypt, in present day Egypt. And, uh, this uh, was incorporated into the Ottoman Empire and the Islamic empires of the uh, of the ninth, eighth, I'm sorry, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth centuries. And then in the early modern period in Europe, that is roughly about 1400s on, or thir really starting mid 1300s on, there started to be a kind of um, reaction to Aristotle. So people started doing the same kinds of, or people were doing the same kinds of research as Aristotle was doing, but they were coming to different conclusions from Aristotle. And so that's part of how you ended up with modern physics, things like the scientific revolution was people arguing with Aristotle and trying to improve on Aristotle. This is 
of course, a very simplified account of the scientific revolution that it involved many more sources and disagreements than just with Aristotle, but I'm trying to put Aristotle and his theories in context in a way. Uh, Aristotle's physics, for instance, um, was given a major overhaul by Galileo and Newton. So a lot of, if you read their writings, a lot of what they're doing is arguing against Aristotle and Aristotle's views. Uh, but Aristotle, uh, as I said, had a tremendous influence for a long time, and he in some ways got the project of physics started with his theories. Just to give a little bit more historical context here, um, here's a map of ancient Greece uh, in this funny kind of 8-bit style uh, because it su supports an, an online video game, actually. Uh, but you can see in green, the, the sections in green in the middle, Macedonia, Athens, and Sparta, that's ancient Greece. And so Aristotle actually was from Macedonia. That was the part of Greece that he lived in. And Alexander the Great, who was a uh, conqueror who ended up um, conquering much of the Mediterranean world, a lot of the places on this map, actually was Aristotle's student. So it's an interesting kind of connection point between Aristotle as a teacher and some of the military and political history of the time. If you look at this um, purple, just again to kind of put this in context, this blue, the blue section in the middle is of course the Mediterranean Sea, and north of the Mediterranean Sea is contemporary Europe. So what is listed as Gaul here in the upper left-hand corner is present-day France. Um, the kind of purplish colored pieces there that make up the boot, Roma and ne uh, Neapoli, um, that is present-day Italy. Uh, and then south of the Mediterranean Sea is North Africa. So uh, the yellow portions labeled Alexandria, Memphis, and Thebes, it, those would be present day Egypt, and then across the way would be Saudi Arabia and other major countries in the Middle East. Uh, and um, in the, in the uh, part of North Africa, of course, just south of the Mediterranean Sea in the middle, um, that includes Algeria and Morocco and other places in North Africa. Uh, and then right underneath the Black Sea, on the other side, that kind of little peninsula jutting out would be present day Turkey. So you can see it, it's interesting, these different um, very important world uh, empires and uh, different countries um, today with, with very different historical traditions and national traditions are all connected by the Mediterranean Sea. And there was a lot of communication between people in these different cultures at this time so that um, Aristotle was aware of theories from Egypt, for instance, and, uh, and uh, Aristotle's theories became known to people throughout the Mediterranean world as well in the centuries that followed. Well, these slides served, I hope, as a brief introduction to Aristotle, the person and his historical context. And in the next set, we will get into, uh, into the book that we're reading from him, The Nicomachean Ethics.